Has your hot water ever had an odor? Maybe a smell something like sulfur or something like that? Well, if you have, it might just be time to clean out your hot water heater. Today's video is going to take you step by step on flushing out your hot water heater, what tools you're going to need, and it is just so simple. Welcome back to Landing Zone Home. Thanks for being here. Well, as we all know, you have to do some periodic maintenance to keep your RV or your Airstream working well and serving you correctly. So this is a real simple thing that you can do to your hot water heater to one, ensure that it's clean on the inside, that you're getting the cleanest water that you can coming out of it. You're gonna prevent the smell that's coming out of your hot water heater. And you just wanna check it out to make sure that everything is working good and everything is in order. So we're gonna step through all of those things in this video here today. Oh, and by the way, I have some news for you. I have a new YouTube channel. It's listed under my name, Jack Honeycutt. I'm gonna put you a link right up here and also a link down in the description so you can get to that. Now you're not gonna find RV information there, but a lot of things that go around RV will be there. there would be a lot of outdoor cooking. We'll be looking at some uh, technology, a lot of product reviews, and some travel, of course. So please check that out if you would. First off, let me talk a little bit about the different types of water heaters. There's basically two types. One is the tankless water heater. You might have something like a Girard, and what that does is it heats the water as soon as you turn the faucet on, and there's no tank involved. And of course, the other water heaters have tanks. Popular manufacturers are Dometic and Suburban. Now the difference between the Dometic and the Suburban is basically what the tank is made out of. Dometic tanks are made out of aluminum. Unlike what you find residentially, you're not gonna find a glass tank in an RV water heater. So Dometic tanks are made out of aluminum, and what's good about that? No rust, they're pretty bulletproof when it comes to that. Now on the other hand, the suburban water heaters have a stainless steel tank and stainless steel over time will corrode. It will oxidize, there'll be a problem there. So what suburban has done to rectify that is they have included an anode rod. The anode rod is really an amazing thing. It is a chemistry reaction that happens inside the water tank. The anode rod attracts those particles and chemicals that will rust the tank and the anode rod sacrifices itself. And over time it will deteriorate and periodically every couple of years it'll have to be replaced. But if you have a Dometic or an aluminum tank water heater, you don't have to worry about anode rods. So the simple flushing routine you're gonna to see today in this video, you should do that about every one to two years and there's really a couple of factors that go into play. And that is how often do you use your RV or how much hot water do you actually use? If you're just using it a little bit, you probably don't need to flush it that often. And the other thing is the type of water that you're using. If it's hard water with a lot of minerals in it, then you may need to flush your tank annually. So consider those two things when you're thinking about when to do your hot water heater flush. The tools required is a 15 16 socket, an extension, and a ratchet. The position of the plug in your hot water heater is such that you're probably not gonna be able to get a wrench on it. And I found that a socket does the best job. You'll also need some kind of tool, or in this case, I have a wand that will reach up inside the hot water heater and flush the sides and the top of the tank. Of course, you'll also need a supply for fresh water. We'll be spraying a lot of water into the tank. City water is either disconnected or turned off. Water pump in the off position. After you've shut off the city water and ensured that your water pump is not on, Find your hot water heater compartment, which is gonna look something like this. It has some vents. There'll be a tab to loosen up to 
drop the access panel door to get you in there. Now this is a gas electric hot water heater by Dometic. This is pretty much the standard for Airstream that have uh, hot water heaters with a tank. Right here is the plug that we're going to be draining from. Right there. We have a high pressure valve right here and I'll show you in just a minute what we'll do with that. You can find the model number and manufacturer on one of the labels inside. This is all of your LP gas flow right here. I'm going to use a clear pan such as this because I want to try to capture some of the water coming out so we might be able to get a look at the particles that we flushed out of the tank. So I'll put that right here at the bottom to catch some of that water. This is the pressure relief valve as I just mentioned and you'll want to go ahead and open that up by pulling this tab and be ready for a little water. Now what that's done is that's relieved any pressure that's in your tank. Once we take this plug out there's going to be a gush of water coming out and we don't want to really get ourselves saturated with water. Use your 15 16 socket, place that on the drain plug and using the extension turn the drain plug counterclockwise and be prepared for a gush of water to come out. It may leak a little bit to start with but it's going to be a real sudden blast of water that comes out and that's going to be depending on the size of your tank. If you have a six or eight gallon or ten gallon tank that's how much water you can expect to come gushing out of this. Just continue to let all of the water drain out. It's not going to hurt anything by getting anything wet in there. Let's flush it out with some water now. You just take your wand, stick it up in the drain hole there, cut it on, and get ready because the water is going to come back out on you. There's no really getting away from that. And you can twist it around. Make sure you get all of the sides and the bottom because there's usually a little bit trapped down in the bottom. Now if you have a lot of problems with buildup in your tank, you're using a lot of hard water and a lot of chemicals, there is another method for doing that deep cleaning and that involves putting vinegar in your hot water heater tank. And once you get the vinegar in there you can cut on your hot water heater and let it heat up that vinegar for several hours. I've seen some people do it like overnight and come back and do a flush on that and it'll really clean the scaling off the sides of the tank. Now getting the vinegar in the tank is a little bit of a tricky situation. Probably the best way to do that is to remove the pressure relief valve here and use a funnel or a tube and put your vinegar in that way. Of course you'll have your plug in access through your pressure relief valve here and fill your tank up with vinegar. Go ahead and cut on the tank and let it run for several hours getting that vinegar real hot and then do come back and do this entire flush process. And I think you're going to get a lot of that out. My tank was not that dirty and I am just about done at this point. I'm going to rinse it out a little bit more. Make sure I'm getting the top of the tank and especially the bottom. Okay, that's it. I'm going to let that drain out and then we'll see if we were able to catch any particles. The water that drained out of the tank is fairly clean. You can see some white particles in there. That's some calcium buildup. Yeah, you can see it pretty good right there. So check yours and uh, see how it comes out. Come back and make a comment. Let us know what you found in your tank and if it was dirtier than mine. Well, let's put it back together. First thing you'll want to do is to go ahead and close your pressure relief valve. And once you put water pressure back on your RV, if you see a drip or two coming out, don't be too alarmed with that. It may take a day or so for it to uh, seat properly. I've taken some plumber's tape and I've put that on the plug and now I'm going to put the plug back in. 
once you get the plug started, you can come back with your socket and go ahead and tighten it down. Get it snugged in there good. Okay, the plug's in place. We're ready now to test it for leaks. I'll go in and cut on the water pump, run some hot water through, and we'll see if we have any leaks. It took almost two minutes for the water pump to blow all of the air out of the line. So you wanna make sure that you give it a chance to blow the air out. And I'm checking now, there's no leaks around the valve up here and no leaks around the drain plug. Well, that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple job. Just have the right tools available. Be patient, take your time with that plug coming out and especially going back in and don't cross thread that. And as I mentioned, I'll put you some links down below to show you where you can get a spare plug if you want to carry one and how to pick up one of those wands to flush out your tank. Well, I really do appreciate you watching. Please check out my new YouTube channel if you have a chance. The link's down below, of course. And until next time, thanks for watching. Plug. Okay, the water's starting to come out, and it just gushed on me.